What's going on, everybody? It's your boy Naruto Explain here, bringing you guys another discussion for Boruto Naruto Next Generations, the manga. And for anime only fans, this is the time of the month where a lot of the content that's going to be on the channel is going to be spoiler heavy. So if you're here, I'm going to go ahead and assume that you've already read the Boruto manga and you guys don't care about me talking about spoilers. So diving right in, I was going back and I was rereading the portion of this last arc that we got where you had team seven fighting against boro and one thing really jumped out in my head because the boruto anime is getting ready to go into the team seven versus owl fight in a few weeks by the time you guys are actually seeing this video you should actually already be on the verge or maybe have already seen the boruto versus owl battle in the anime where owl is using that machine gun and firing off all these shots and Boruto versus Al and the proper fight should have taken place and it kind of dawned on me after the fact that after they find Kawaki we never actually see Konohamaru in the manga ever again. Now I've talked about in the past about how Konohamaru has these special missions that Naruto allows him to go on and that's part of the reason why we don't actually see Konohamaru with Team 7. I recommend checking out that video if you've not seen it. But as I was rereading the Boro fight, I really started to get irritated because it really dawned on me that this should have been that moment where Konohamaru got his Kakashi moment. So I like to refer to a Kakashi moment as being that Zabaza versus Kakashi moment where everybody realized once you got to that scene that you were dealing with an utter badass and it was at that point where Kakashi became so overpowered that even Masashi Kishimoto himself was saying that Kakashi's too powerful and he needs to do something to actually wear down the character and kind of build in some weaknesses and Jujutsu Kaisen you kind of get something like that with Gojo I don't want to go into spoilers because you know a lot of people are anime only but something happens with the character Gojo that is extremely huge again I don't want to go any further because I don't want to spoil anybody but that's the route that Kishimoto could have taken with the character Kakashi instead of actually depowering the character of Kakashi by giving Kakashi those stamina weaknesses. However, moving back to the character of Konohamaru, Konohamaru, after all this time, has not actually had the opportunity to prove his mettle. And one thing a lot of people took issue with in the Boro fight was the fact that like, yes, Sarda, she has her three Tomoe Sharingan, and Sarda, you see her switching it on and off throughout the fight as she's analyzing Boro's movement. Sarda is using her Shidori at this point. A lot of people like myself were cracking jokes like Kawaki saying she's the true team leader of Team 7. She's taking ownership of the team, but this was one of those times where Konohamaru should have been on the battlefield at this point. Like, we saw him briefly mix it up with Kashin Koji. Even Kashin Koji is complimenting the dude's skill. But the fact of the matter is, is that Boro is obviously going to be weaker than Kashin Koji. So, this would be a really great opportunity to actually see Konohamaru mix it up with him. Because if you have Boruto and Kawaki working together and they're blowing off part of this dude's upper body, Miski's getting this dude off guard, Sarda's using Shidori and she's taking down his core, this is one of those times where you give Konohamaru the opportunity to actually mix it up with Boro and actually start putting some respect on the guy's name. So far, the only highlights that the guy has is the fact that the dude is shown very briefly holding his own against Jugo, and you actually have one of the Boruto openings where you see Konohamaru fighting against some bandits, but the fact is, is that we've never actually seen Konohamaru do much of anything in the anime, and so the manga had a really, really big opportunity to redeem him at this point. Like, one problem that a lot of people have with that Boro versus Team 7 fight is the fact that, like, look, they're all gaining. There's no way that they should have been holding their own as well as they did. I get it. You know, Boruto and Kawaki, they have the Karma Seal. It has an unnamed multiplier. It's undisclosed to us. Even Naruto, when he's taking some of the attacks on Boruto, we saw previously how in the beginning of the Owl arc when Naruto was fighting against Boruto, he's neg diffing all of these shadow clones that Boruto's using. He's not really getting pressure at some point, but when you look at what happens when Naruto and Boruto are fighting, just when Boruto uses the Karma Seal, Naruto in his base has to actually brace himself and take some of those attacks. Naruto has to actually use Shadow Clones in order to avoid some of Boruto's attacks. So there's a pretty significant boost in power that you get from Karma. So when you take in a 
double infused karma seal racine gun it makes a lot of sense like yeah it does damage to boro and yet at the same time it would have made the reveal of boro toshiki that much more epic when you look at the fact that their team leader Konohamaru is right there on the battlefield. He's using that fire release that the Sarutobi clan is well renowned for. You see Konohamaru using those chakra blades. You see him using potentially summoning jutsu. You see Konohamaru just throw out all the tricks that are in his bag, coordinating attacks with Team 7. And you see all this development that we know happened off screen with Konohamaru and Team 7 where they go on these different missions. It would say a lot about Konohamaru's character if he was able to see Kawaki fight and then immediately start implementing Kawaki's fighting style into the fighting style of Team 7. This was something that was a huge missed opportunity. I understand that the whole reason for it was to actually highlight Sardis' growth and kind of put some respect on Sardis' name, make the whole reveal of Sardis using the Sharingan and the Shidori to destroy the Scientific Ninja Weapon Core inside of Boro and to directly set up the whole thing of Boruto transforming into his Boruto Shiki form. But the reason why I kind of push back and challenge and say that Konohamaru should have been the one that was on that battlefield and potentially even the trigger for the Boruto Shiki form is the fact is is that we know that Konohamaru and Boruto have a very very close relationship. Boruto and Sarada there's a close relationship don't get me wrong like Sarada's been around Boruto ever since they were little kids but the same is true with Konohamaru and we know to a certain extent that Konohamaru and Boruto have a big brother little brother relationship and so it'll be really awesome to see where when Konohamaru is the last man standing, all the members of Team 7 have been knocked around and Konohamaru is fighting desperately in order to actually protect his team from this member of Kara and most importantly fighting desperately to try and release Naruto from that ceiling jar that Jigen had him in. It had been really cool to see Konohamaru on his last leg, about to be crushed by Boro, who's gone on that rampage. And then you have Boruto in that Boruto Shiki form. And then you see Konohamaru up close and personal as Konohamaru's watching as Boruto's taking on Boro. That right there, I think that would have been a better setup right there because it gives you opportunity to put some respect on Konohamaru's name. It also gives you even more of a payoff for that huge reveal for Boruto Shiki because I'm just going to be real with you, right? Like reading that in hindsight, knowing everything I know now, the Boruto Shiki reveal, if you take out the surprise element of actually seeing it, it's one of those things where critically, I don't think it had the best payoff. I really don't think it had the best payoff. I think that the build up for the reveal i think that was for the most part it was the bare bones of what you needed in order to get to that point boro was absolutely unstoppable by this point and yet at the same time emotionally i don't think everything was there because if you look at the manga boruto and sarda there's not enough weight there the manga is really cashing in on the fact that you've probably seen the actual anime and so by seeing the anime you see more of the relationship of boruto and sarda on the manga version there's not much of a relationship there and i think that one thing that could work here is konohamaru being the person that is in charge of the development and because we've read the naruto manga we know how much konohamaru has huge respect for naruto it could be a really good way to have a call back to what happened in chapter two where konohamaru says to naruto that they're going to fight for the title Hokage, or I believe it was Naruto that said that to Konohamaru that they would one day fight for the right to be Hokage. You could pay off that moment right there where Konohamaru saying like, look, we still haven't had our fight. I can't let Naruto stay here. I can't let Naruto's son die here. I mean, it's one of those things where all that stuff and seeing Konohamaru fail only to have his student actually be the one that bails him out. It could have been something that really set up that moment. However, I want to know from you guys. How do you guys think that Konohamaru would have done against Boro? And do you agree with me that it would have made more sense for Konohamaru to be the one who played a critical role in taking down Boro and potentially even triggering Boruto's Boruto Shiki transformation? Let me know down in the comment section below. But as always, guys, if you like anything I had to say, don't forget to comment, rate, subscribe, and share. Thank you so much for watching until the end. Have an awesome day, guys.